Hello, this is Abby from ollieholly.com. Welcome to day one of my 12 days of appliques crochet along. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to crochet this gift box. Here are the materials I'll be using to make my gift box. I'm using Sheep's Katona yarn and light coral and candy apple. The hook I'll be using with it is a 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. I'll also be using a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, a pair of scissors, and for blocking I'll be using some pins, a bowl of water, a blocking board, and a small clean towel. For finishing I'm using felt that matches the main color of my applique, and I'll be using some Gorilla fabric glue to attach the felt to the back of my applique. I'm also going to use a sharp pair of scissors for cutting the felt, as well as a sheet of paper towel and a toothpick for cleaning up the glue. If you want to follow along with a written pattern, you'll find the PDF for the full collection in my shop on December 6th. It's currently being tested by my amazing testers, so it's not quite ready yet, but when it's ready, I'll link it in the description box down below. You can sign up for my newsletter through the link in the description box if you want to be notified when the pattern is ready. The first thing we will need to work on is the box itself. To start, make a magic circle with your main color. To do so, hold the yarn tail, so that's this end right here, over your fingers like so. Next, wrap the working end of the yarn over your index finger and cross it over the top of the yarn tail to form an X. Wrap the working end down the back of your fingers and sandwich the working end between your fingers to hold it down. Flip your hand over and insert your hook under the right strand then over the left. Pull the left strand under the right, then turn your hook up to create a loop. Yarn over, so I like to do that by just inserting my hook under the working end to wrap it around the hook. And finally, pull a loop up through the loop on your hook. Into this magic circle, work four single crochet. I personally like to work the yarn under single crochet instead of the standard single crochet. So that's what I'll be doing here. If you want to learn more about the difference between the standard single crochet and yarn under, I have a video and I'll link it down below. So for this first round, Work four single crochet. Insert your hook into the circle, making sure to go under both the circle itself and this yarn tail. Yarn under, so that means I'm wrapping my yarn around my hook from the front to the back, instead of the back to the front. So I'm yarning under and pulling a loop up. Then yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. Repeat this three more times. Insert your hook into the circle, yarn under to pull a loop up, then yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. So that's two. And again, insert your hook into the circle, yarn under to pull a loop up. Then yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. So that's three. Insert, yarn under to pull a loop up, yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. That's four. Pull on the tail from your magic circle to close the circle up. In round two, single crochet three times into each stitch. We'll be working in continuous rounds so I'm going to work directly into the first stitch. So into this first stitch, I'm working my first single crochet. So that's one. And I'm going to mark the first stitch of each round with my stitch marker. So into that same stitch, I'm going to work two more single crochet. So insert, yarn under, pull a loop up, Yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. So that's two. One more time. 
three. I'm going to continue working three single crochet into each stitch for the rest of this round. Pause here to continue working round two, and I'll meet you at the beginning of round three. You should have a total of 12 stitches by the time you're done with round two. In round three, start by working one single crochet into the first stitch. Then we're going to repeat the following set of stitches three times. We're going to single crochet three times into the next stitch, then work two single crochet. So that's three, one, one, three, one, one. Then into the final two stitches, we're going to work three into that stitch and one into the final stitch. Into that next stitch, I'm going to work three single crochet. So that's one, two, and three. Then I'm going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So one, then into the next stitch, one. So repeat working single crochet three, then two single crochet all the way around. So that's three, and then one and one. Into the next stitch, that's one, two, three, then one and one. Then for the final two stitches, we're going to work three into the next one. So that's one, two, three. Then one into the final stitch. You should have a total of 20 stitches by the time you are done with round three. In round four, start by working one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So that's one, and that's two. Then repeat the following set three times. Single crochet three into the next stitch, then work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat that a total of three times. Then into the final three stitches, we're going to work three single crochet into that next stitch, then one and one. Single crochet three, so that's one, two, and three. Then work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Then just repeat that two more times. Pause here to continue alternating between working three single crochet into one stitch, then working one stitch into each of the next four stitches. I'll meet you towards the end of this round. So into the final three stitches, into that stitch there, I'm going to work three single crochet. And then one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. 
You should have a total of 28 stitches by the time you are done with round 4. In round 5, start by working one single crochet into each of the next 3 stitches. So that's 1, 2, and 3. Then alternate between working 3 single crochets into the next stitch and then working 1 single crochet into each of the next 6 stitches. Into that next stitch, we're going to single crochet 3. 1 2 and 3. Then work 1 single crochet into each of the next 6 stitches. 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 Pause here to repeat the set two more times and I'll meet you at the end of this round. And into the final four stitches, into this stitch here, I'm going to work three single crochet. So that's one, two, three. Then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Cut the working end of the yarn and pull your hook up to fasten off. Thread your yarn tail onto a darning needle and we're going to work a seamless join in the round. To do so, count two stitches from your final stitch, so that's this one right here. Insert your needle under the top loops of the stitch and pull through. Then insert your needle back into the center of the top loops of your final stitch and out the back. Pull through. Weave the yarn tails in and trim off any excess yarn. Looking at the finished gift box, you'll see that it's looking a little wonky and not sitting flat. We're going to have to block the box to help shape it. Blocking is a process where you introduce moisture to the yarn fibers to help relax it so that we can pin it out to shape it. To do so, dunk your square into some water and saturate your piece. Then take it out and squeeze out any excess water. Take your clean towel and press down on your square to blot out most of the water. And now we can pin the box onto the blocking board, making sure to pin the corners to make them sharper. Also adjust stitches that look out of place. Allow this piece to fully dry before taking the pins out. This is what the box looks like before blocking, and on the left is the after. You can see that the blocked piece is more square and lays flatter. While the box is drying, we can start working on the bow. With your second color, start with a slip knot on your hook, and make sure to leave a slightly longer yarn tail than you normally would. Chain 19. So yarn over, and pull a loop up through the loop on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 18, and 19. Making sure that your chain is not twisted, bring the end up to the hook and slip stitch to the first chain to join. Do so by inserting your hook into that first chain, yarn over, and pull it through the two loops on your hook. Chain 20. 
Work one slip stitch into each chain. Start by inserting your hook into the first chain where the current slip stitch is worked out of. Yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. So I'm inserting my hook into the center of this next chain and out the back. Then working my slip stitch. Pause here to continue working all the way around until you get to the end. You should have a total of 19 stitches by the time you are done. Cut the yarn tail and fasten off. Make sure to leave a tail that is at least 6 inches long. Pinch the circle down the center where the tail is, then wrap the tail around the pinched area a few times. Adjust the loops so that they are roughly the same size on either sides of the center. Flip the bow over to expose the back and tie a really tight double knot to secure the center of the bow. Set the bow aside for later. Next, let's work on the vertical ribbon. For the vertical ribbon, start by chaining 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. When working into a chain, I like to insert my hook into the back bumps of the chain instead of through the chain itself. I find that it creates a cleaner edge. When looking at a chain head on, you'll see that the chains look like a bunch of little V's stacked neatly on top of each other. When you flip it over, you'll see these little bumps behind each chain. That's where we're going to be inserting our hook into. Starting in the second back bump from your hook, so that's this one right here, work one single crochet into each bump. Pause here to work all the way across. By the time you are done, you should have a total of 9 stitches. Fasten off and leave the tails for sewing. Your tails should be longer than mine, about 5 to 6 inches long. And finally, let's work on the horizontal ribbon. Start by chaining 10. Working into the back bumps of the chain, start in the second bump from your hook. Work three single crochet. So that's one, two, and three. Then chain three. So that's one, two, and three. Next, we're going to skip the next three chains here. So that's one, two, three, and we're going to work into that fourth bump there. And starting there, we're gonna work three single crochet. So that's one, two, and three. Fasten off and leave the tails for sewing. Now that all of my pieces are ready and the box itself is fully dry, let's assemble them together. The piece with the hole is going to be the horizontal ribbon. Insert the vertical ribbon through the horizontal one to form a cross. Then place it on top of the box and sew the ends of the cross to the box. Now 
I'll also be sewing a stitch into the center where the two ribbons meet to secure that down. Because this is such a small applique, every little detail counts. So I've noticed that this side of the ribbon is sticking out a little too much for me. So I'm going to redo it. Continue to attach the other two remaining ends of the cross to the box. Then tie up the loose yarn in the back to secure it further. Trim off any excess yarn tails. Then I'm just going to take some fabric glue and glue down the parts that I've not sewed down. Make sure to work in a well-ventilated area. I like to use fabric glue instead of super glue because it dries flexible. And I also like that fabric glue doesn't dry right away. And this allows me to move the pieces into place without having to worry about the glue drying on me. Sew the center of the bow onto the top of the gift box. I'm sewing the two sides of the bow to the box as well, but this is not necessary. I just did it because I wanted the two sides of the bow to be in a particular position. Tie the yarn tails in the back together into a tight double knot. Trim off any excess yarn tails. If you want to, you can cut two small pieces of felt into the shape of a tag. Embroider whatever you want onto one of them, then glue the back of that piece to the other felt tag to hide the embroidery tails. Then you can just sew it onto your gift box. I'm turning my applique into an ornament. To do so, I have a piece of yarn that's about 5 inches long. I'm folding it in half and tying a knot. Trim off any excess yarn, then glue the knot to the back of the applique. Let that dry for about two to three minutes to set a little so that it doesn't slide around when we glue the felt to the back. Apply the glue to the back of the gift box and press the back onto the felt. If you miss any spots, you can always go back and apply more glue. Clean the nozzle of your glue before putting it away. Allow the glue to dry for a few hours before cutting it out with a sharp pair of scissors. Cutting it too early will run you the risk of getting glue all over your scissors. Trim the felt in the back to give it a cleaner look. Come back tomorrow to see which applique we will be working on for day two. If you like this video, you might like some of my other videos. Please consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one.